Well, Brock, as soon as we knew we were coming down here, this was one interview we knew we wanted to do, and that's to sit down with Mariners outfielder Mitch Hanniger. And that's not a phrase you got to hear last year. It's uh, what's old is new again, huh? Mariners outfielder Mitch Hanniger. It's good to have you back. Thank you. It's good to be back. Thanks for having me on. What uh, What's this been like? I mean, what a what a crazy journey. And we had uh, the chance to see you was at the game Saturday. Uh, or Sunday, rather, and uh, first pitch, and the crowd's going wild and cheering for you, and of course you had to hit that ball out of the park. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was cool, man. Uh, walking into the play, definitely heard the fans, and, um, you know, it's reciprocal for me just to feel the same way, so I was uh, trying to take that on real quick before the uh, timer went off in the batter's box, having to get in real fast. But Oh, that's um, so lame. <laughs> yeah, no, but it, I mean, it's, it's spring they, training, they but it was cool. They give you guys cool. a chance in, that, in those moments to, like, yeah. they almost got to call timeout. Yeah, no, it was cool, though, to be back and, um, yeah, to feel the warm embrace. It's, uh, you know, I feel the same way, so excited to get back up to Seattle, and it's good to be back in the Mariners uniform. When did you have any idea that this would be a possibility? The day the Farhan lady called me, yeah, I don't know what day it was, January sixth, seventh, eighth, something like that. Yeah, yeah, um, I had felt like something would happen. We, you know, we had, when I was with the Giants, we had signed um, the Korean outfielder, and um, it kind of we had a plethora of corner guys. So I'm like, if they have an opportunity, I could see them doing it. Um, and then, like I said earlier, like I think if I had a great year and stayed healthy, I'd probably have been untouchable, but um, you know, had a terrible season, bunch of injuries, and it's good to be back in the Mariners uniform. I'm, I'm excited. It led me back here, so just having faith in, in that, and um, I'm happy to be back here. So is that your agent's number or a, a, a Giants number? You, the name you mentioned when you got that phone call, was that? Giants. Oh, that was, yeah, oh, Giants oh, really? team president. Even yeah, before yeah. the agent calls you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So you see that number pop up. Yeah, your, your agent doesn't always find out. Sometimes, like, they make the trade, and, and the team official, whether it's the GM, team front, whoever, calls you right away. Oh, really? Yeah. So, huh. um, depending, I think, on relationship with the player, or they sure. might call the agent first. It just depends. But sure. yeah, it's good to hear straight from him. And cool. at that point, are you hoping to stay in the West Coast? Are you hoping to come back to Seattle? I mean, what what are you what are you thinking once you start that conversation? That I got traded. Yeah. Or? Yeah. I mean, I he said, you know, thanks and. Um, and I said, well, where am I going? And he's like, you're going to Seattle. And I started laughing. Um, yeah, I was, I was happy. Definitely happy. So you left on good terms, right? I mean, that, at least that's my understanding and talking to folks in the front office that it was not an acrimonious departure when you left. No. I mean, I had a much, much, much better situation for, you know, my family and I financially to go to San Fran. So, um I was hoping it would be a harder decision with I wanted the Mariners to be more interested, but at the time um, they felt like they could build the team a different way or and go get other players, and I don't fault them for that. But um, ideally in a perfect world, I would have just signed back with the Mariners at, close to or at what the Giants had offered, but it was you know nowhere near there at that time, and it's it's all good. No no hard feelings, and I'm just happy to be back. Like It's, it's great to be back in a Mariners uniform. Was it like you never left, or are you a little like Salk and I with like, who's that? Who's that? <laughs> who's that? Um, I wish you all had names. Both. <laughs> a little bit of both. A little bit of both. I mean, um, I know the one thing was hard last year is just being away from all my friends and guys I'd played with for a while and got close to and won with, and um, so that was that was a tough change. And um, you know, I I had watched a lot of games early in the season when I could when we got home and the Mariners were playing, and then. I had to stop because I was getting a little nostalgic and sad, and I was like, "Man, I was kind of wanted to be, kind of wanted to be up back in Seattle, but um, kind of had to force myself to stop and focus on where I was at." And you know, I, at the time, I'm like, "I got two more years here in San Fran after this season, so I better get used to it." But it was just a, you know, a lot of guys. Don't, I feel like a lot of guys don't talk about that, and that was it was a weird, tough change for me. And yeah, and then obviously just not performing well makes it even harder. There are some fun things to talk about, and, and I want to. but I, And I hate that we have to ask you about this, but I feel like we do, and, and that's just the injury stuff. It, it, do, you, do you have any idea how so many weird, fluky injuries have come your way? And Brock's like the perfect person to sit next to you because he's had so many in his career as a, as a quarterback, and they're not hamstrings, and they're not from not working hard or anything like that. It just it feels like you've just had this bad luck at times. Yeah, it definitely feels like bad luck, but I think uh, for me, I've learned a lot from all the injuries, and I think I've grown a ton as a person. So for me, I'm feeling like being back here in Seattle, having gone through a bunch of rehabs, a bunch of surgeries, and um, as an athlete, I think the two hardest things to get over is like terrible performance and 
sur- having surgery, you know, career threatening surgery. And I've had plenty of both. So um, I think it's just prepared me to come back and step into a leadership role and, and help the younger guys. I feel like there's a lot of guys on the team I can relate to, whether it's going through an injury, performing poorly, um, trying to get established as a big leaguer. I mean, I've, I've been through a lot in my career and I think I'm looking at it as, as how can I help the guys around me? I think this is what, what needs, I got to rise to that occasion and, yeah. and take that on head on. There's got to be some really incredible high points in that career as well. I mean, I think about the walk-off hit against the Angels. I think about the the big uh, hit at the end of the year a couple of years ago against the Angels. I think I think of what it must have been like to see the numbers that San Francisco was willing to give to you and your family. And there has to be some really incredible high points. How do you handle and balance those with some of those other low points that you mentioned there? Yeah, definitely been been both throughout the career and um i guess thankful to experience have experienced both and um i think the bad times or the tough times has just allowed me to soak in the good ones better and um you know just like i said trying to give back to my teammates and and the fans and and play hard for the team i want to i've always talked about it ever since i got here i want to win a world series in seattle and um this city's starving for you know another winning team and um, it was such a great feeling going to the playoffs and sucked falling short, but um, we accomplished part of our goal that year. And I know they they missed the game playoffs by game last year, and we're looking to get back there and do that again. And um, for me, I'm, I'm I'm really thankful for everything I've had in my career. You know, the ups and the downs. And I like I said earlier, I just think it's it's made me grow a ton as a person and a player. So um, I think now it's just have fun, enjoy, it, play hard, and help the guys around me, and let's let's win a World Series. How about this Julio cat? Is he pretty good, or is he getting any better since <laughs> you he guys left? know, man? He's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to watch. Um, what he's just taken off. It's just like you know, hit the ground running and didn't look back. And um, you know, when you look back on that that first year in 2022 with him too, like it didn't start off so hot, mm-hmm. and it just shows how much he believes in himself. And um, he's always been a hard worker, and um, it's really cool to play with a player like that, and you know, see him continue to grow and develop, and um, looking forward to learning from some things from him and hopefully teaching him some things as well well plus now you only need to cover from your position to the line Ooh, that'd be great I <laughs> right? I mean, you don't even that. need to go to your That's right i said i'm gonna post up on the line and just take it all <laughs> let him do it no fly zone i said i'll be throwing him up <laughs> <laughs> you just make the plays you we're come, good you come catch yeah. it i'll rest my legs <laughs> yeah i like that that's uh that's nice you mentioned leadership i think about you a couple of years ago writing the letter the open letter to the organization and the fans and and just the incredible reaction it received and if i remember correctly there was a lot in there about leadership and and looking for some of those veteran players to lead you come back now as one of those players how does how does that feel and how do you clearly you're embracing it i've heard you talk about it now a few times what does it mean to be a leader now at this stage of your career it's great i think um blessed to be playing this game as long as i have and um i know i still have many good years left in me and um like i said i think I've, i've obviously been through a lot with with the injuries and the surgeries and the rehabs Um, and I think just trying to share any of my knowledge or what's worked for me with, with the younger guys. And, um, like I, when I I just, even with outfield hitting stuff, I just try to get across to these young guys that like, you can learn so much from the older players or for the guys around you, but at the same time, like take it in, think about it, digest it, see if it works for you and implement it to your game. That's great. If you can't, if it doesn't work for you, know yourself. Like if at the end of the day, you should just know more about yourself by, by listening what works for someone else and then seeing if it works for you either you double down on your original beliefs or you adopt some of theirs and i feel like that's what i've tried to do and um you know and that goes for like stuff in the training room stuff in the gym stuff hitting life everything um <laughs> just trying to learn from guys around you and i've been blessed to play with uh, a lot of good guys that took me under their wing and helped me and then um always looking and reading and trying to stay in touch with the with the players that I enjoy talking to that help me make me better and um, hopefully offer them something and they can take something from me. And it's, you know, it's a give and take relationship. So I've enjoyed that. I know we're really early in the process, just a couple games into spring training, but do you feel some of this Brant Brown and some of the, you know, changes made to the lineup and personnel and even early here meetings with Scott service, do you feel a little new direction offensively with this club? Yeah, I mean, I think our, our offense is built really good. Like, I feel like it's a solid lineup. Hmm. And, um, you know, I, I don't think we've had that. In my first two years, we had just a bunch of studs in our lineup, and we, we hit really well, and we couldn't pitch. And then there was a f- couple years where we 
didn't do anything well and then <laughs> and then the last couple of years has been like we we pitch we pitch really good play good defense and we had good timely hitting and now i feel like we should just play a better brand of consistent baseball we're going to pitch well we're going to play good defense and i feel like we have more of a um established starting nine guys in the box guys you can go oh yeah he's done it before instead of being like well we'll see well we hope for the best you know yeah it feels like it's a deeper lineup it may not oh, yeah. it may not i mean other than julio's on his own you know planet in terms of talent it doesn't have three or four just absolute studs at the very top yeah but man does it get long in a hurry right what is that like to be in a in a in a lineup like that how do you think that was great help? i just think there's there's one guy shouldn't you know feel like he has to carry the whole team and I remember a lot of times in 21, it was like, all right, we better we better score with one through four, one through five, or else we don't really have a shot. And like I said earlier, thank God we pitched really well, and we won't, we we've always been good at winning one one game, so uh, we were able to win a lot that way. But um, it's going to be a little easier not having to rely on our pitchers so much, and um, not having to rely on the guys just hit, hitting the top or the middle of the order. I think the bottom of the order can produce well too. So you, you lied to me. I got to tell you, and I and I feel bad bringing this up. What? Well, I, I've mentioned this on once you left, and I thought you were never coming back. I did. I did say this on the air. I betrayed your confidence, and I feel wow. bad about that. Wow. But what you, do you, mean? What you, happened? you told me that Luis Castillo was going to win a Cy Young Award last year. You told me that. Okay. You said, "Hey, this guy's going to win a Cy Young Award in this park with this defense," and it didn't happen. So I feel like you lied a little bit, <laughs> right. and I feel like I made up for it by totally betraying your, you know, off the record comment okay. and telling the people on the radio. So I do want to apologize to you good. for that. I'm sorry. He can he can make that right this year, but I'll take All Star games. I mean, he's making All Stars. <laughs> True. You guys should be happy. True. Uh, Luis and Kirby and Gilbert and Bryce, Bryce. and Bryant, like. How do you know which of these guys is going to end up as as the Cy Young favorite when it's said and done? What a crew! I don't think you don't need to just let them be themselves and let them yeah, go and that, like and that, just let it be. Yeah, dude, we don't we don't have to Goodness. you don't have to hit right on every prediction. Oh. <laughs> uh, Trust me, I know. You, you, yeah. you, there's no point for getting the predictions <laughs> right ever. How yeah. about hitting in T-Mobile versus AT and T? I mean, two great hitters parks. You've been able yeah, they're the play. best. They're both the best. So, <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you like ask to get traded to the Reds? <laughs> like, I, I really want to go to yeah. Philadelphia and see if I can hit yeah, in this park uh, all the time. It's all good. I like a challenge, but yeah, I mean, um, it, w- it would be nice to experience what you know the NL Central or the <laughs> some parks in the NL East are like. But it's okay. We, How we, hard we, now are we travel to uh, different true. cities and get to get to see what it's like. How so. hard is it? Because you know, I, I talked to you a little bit about what it was like in San Francisco. What is it like hitting in these two ballparks, and why is it different from elsewhere? Uh, it, I mean, the ball just doesn't travel like other places. You know, it's um, it's more pitcher friendly ballpark, and I think that's one really cool thing about our game is like not not every field is the same. Yeah. So, um, and I think it's cool when when teams cater to that their home field, and you know whether you're playing in in Fenway or you can construct your team to benefit you know wins and losses by. Um, trying to do the good thing. So for us, it's like if we pitch well, play really good defense, and then now having a pretty damn solid lineup, like that's that's really exciting for me. And I feel like it's the first time I showed up to camp and been like, oh, we have we're good in every area where there's always there was always a hole in the past. Right? Does it get in people's head? Oh, for sure. Yeah, but I think um, it's it's more process oriented, right? Like you you have to be uh, confident in yourself that you square a ball up. It doesn't matter if it goes over the fence and in a glove. Like you did everything you could. And I think as a hitter, that's the one thing that you really need to buy into and get over. And do you guys struggle with it at times? Yes. Do I struggle with it at times? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, like if I click the ball twice and I make that loud contact I'm looking for and whatever happens after is out of my control, yeah. you really need to buy into that. So help me because when, when we've talked about this on the air, a lot of the response we get is, yeah, but both teams are playing in the same park. Mm-hmm. Is it harder as a home team to have that when it's a you know 81 Yeah, because, here? I mean, <laughs> versus <laughs> – you go to a – I understand that, that um, argument for a three-game series or a four-game series, but, you know, you crush four or five balls in, in a week and you're 0 for 5 with five lineouts well, that's, or, or five home runs in a week. I yeah. mean, you know, you see guys go in these hitters' ballparks and um, you, can, you can hit four or five homers in a week. That, that's not always the case in Seattle. And so I think, one, don't have that expectation. Know that it's going to be a challenge. And don't – Try to slug. Just be a good hitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, last thing for me is, you know, we're starting spring training and we're going to have fans 
coming uh, from the Northwest, what would you, what advice would you give them? If they're going to come down here and spend a few days being out here at the complex, if you were to say to a fan, hey, make sure you do this, make sure you see, you know, if you know some of the young talent here, make sure you get your eyes on, what would be some counsel you give some Mariners fans coming down? Well, I think one cool thing about spring training is you you know you can walk the backfields and you can kind of peep in the cages a little bit and you know from the from the fence over here you can see into the weight room a little bit so you can see all the work that guys put in behind the scenes and um, you know typically with most fans show up fifteen twenty thirty minutes before a game and mm-hmm. at T-Mobile or on the road and you don't really get to see all the hard work and I think. Um, you know, it's funny as a player, people are like, oh, what time do you get to the field? Five? And then you guys play at 645? It's like, no, I'm usually there by one at the latest. <laughs> so, like, they don't really understand what all the work that goes in, and yeah. I think it's a glimpse of behind the scenes. Um, and then, yeah, like another thing is, you know, look, get the roster and look at some of the young guys coming up and stick around, watch them play, and, um, you know, hopefully in a couple of years they're in the big leagues. And, you know, that's a cool thing. I've, I've always said I like hopefully um, – this this series that's coming out with the Red Sox, the I think Netflix is following around. I'd like to see that more in baseball. I think you'd, we'd get so many more fans, and it'd be cool. There's so much stuff that happens behind the scenes that you know fans don't really have access to. So cool. hopefully, you see that more often in baseball. I know, yeah, with like a hard knocks type thing for football, yeah. and hopefully, they, Netflix starts doing that for baseball. What do we think of these uniforms? All right, so there you go. There's Mitch Hanniger, who takes the time to join us here uh, this morning on Brock and Salt. Seriously, man, it yeah. is good to have you back. You, it was man. nice just back. seeing your face in the clubhouse. You seem really happy. Yeah. I'm happy. Like I said, it's not, I'm not faking it. I'm happy. I'm really excited to be back here. It's, a cool it's always felt like home for me. And, um, yeah, my wife and I love living in Seattle. Yeah, and what did she say when she found out you guys were going back to she's Seattle? She's excited. Is we, she? We talked, yeah, we talked a lot about how we missed Seattle a lot last season. And, um yeah, it's it's good to be back, and it's a little harder because we live an hour and a half from San Fran. So um, she was able to go home if I was on the road and and take my daughters back home. But now it's, but we don't need, we don't feel like we want to go home as much because Seattle's it's always been so nice and um, feels like home. So it's cool. So How old are your kids now? Um, three and nine weeks. Wow, nine weeks. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I knew about oh, that. No Congratulations. To the park at yeah, you might want to start getting to the park at 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah, like, happen. hey, you know what? I'm here all day. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll sleep here. Yeah. It's very quiet at the park I'll at night. Naps at the field, yeah. <laughs> I'll see that, how, how that goes over. Yeah. Right. Mitch, thank you so yeah, much. Good you to have you back. We'll see you up in Seattle. Thank you.